It is possible if you're drinking black coffee and you're, or mate and you're ingesting a lot of water that you're going to dehydrate yourself somewhat because of excretion of sodium. Salt is a really good thing. The science behind hydration and brain function. Did you know that proper hydration can significantly enhance your cognitive functions? It's true, and the kind of salt you use matters immensely. Let's dive into the science behind this. While most of us grab our morning coffee for a quick wake-up call, few realize that caffeine can dehydrate our bodies, stripping essential sodium along with water. Here's where the quality of salt you consume daily comes into play. Why high-quality salt is crucial. Contrary to popular belief, not all salt is harmful. High-quality salts like Celtic sea salt and fleur de sel provide not only sodium but also over 80 vital trace minerals. These minerals support not just hydration but overall brain health, enhancing nerve function and mental clarity. Have you ever felt unusually tired or unable to focus after your morning coffee? Well, what if I told you that your coffee might be dehydrating you more than you realize? Today, we're diving deep into the vital world of salt and water balance, guided by the insights of neuroscientist Dr. Andrew Huberman. Stay tuned as we explore how you can enjoy your daily coffee without compromising your hydration, and why adding a simple ingredient to your water can drastically enhance your brain function and overall health. Salt has got kind of a bad rap, but there was an article published in Science Magazine about the, the whole myth around salt. I mean, it's true that people with chronic hypertension need to avoid salt, but for most people who are consuming enough fluid, salt is great. A lot of times people will feel jittery during the day. They'll think they'll have low blood sugar, take a little bit of, take a pinch of salt, put it in some water, maybe a little lemon juice to kill the taste and drink that. You notice you're just rock solid. Why? You might've been low blood pressure or low sodium. Sometimes people can't focus and they are low sodium. Sometimes we crave sugar and we're actually low sodium. A lot of people think that they are low on blood sugar because they're shaky and they can't think or they have a headache when actually they're low in sodium. And especially if you're drinking a lot of caffeine. So I'm a big believer in salt. So I drink salt water first thing in the morning because I drink black coffee and that keeps my levels of alertness really good. The surprising science of salt and caffeine. Did you know that the caffeine in your morning brew could be silently depleting your body's essential sodium levels? Dr. Andrew Huberman, a renowned neuroscientist, sheds light on this little known fact. According to him, consuming caffeine can lead to significant sodium excretion, which many of us mistake for symptoms of low blood sugar. But there's a simple, effective solution, and it revolves around one crucial element, salt. Why your brain loves salt? Let's talk about your brain on salt. Yes, salt. Not often do we hear about the positive effects of salt on our brain function. Dr. Huberman emphasizes that sodium is not just for flavor, it's essential for keeping our neurons firing correctly. Low sodium levels can lead to symptoms like confusion, fatigue, and even reduced cognitive performance. So, how can you maintain optimal brain function throughout the day? We'll reveal Dr. Huberman's simple yet effective morning routine shortly. But how much salt, and why room temperature water? Hydration is essential for mental performance. Now, I confess I don't really like drinking big glasses or big jugs of water first thing in the morning. I don't know why, but my thirst doesn't tend to kick in first thing. You may be different. Either way, I force myself essentially to drink at least 16 and most days 32 ounces of water. I also put a little bit of sea salt in the water. As many of you know, neurons require ionic flow. What that means is neurons need sodium, they need magnesium, and they need potassium in order to function. We do tend to get dehydrated at night. Even if the day is not very hot, I try and top off or I try and make sure that I'm hydrated early in the day before I begin any work. So I make myself drink this water with a little bit of sea salt. How much sea salt, if you really want to get detailed, it's, I suppose it's about half a teaspoon. It's not much. That's what I do. And I drink that more or less room temperature. I find that drinking really cold water first thing in the day kind of like cramps up my insides. So I don't do that. Debunking salt myths. Many of us have grown up hearing that salt is a villain in our diet. However, not all salt is created equal and not all of us need to limit our salt intake rigorously. Dr. Huberman advocates for the mindful consumption of high quality salts like Celtic sea salt or fleur de sel, especially if you're a coffee lover or engage in intermittent fasting. But why these salts? What makes them different from regular table salt or even the trendy Himalayan pink salt? We'll break down the facts. Practical tips on salt and hydration. Now, how do you balance coffee intake and hydration? It's simpler than you might think. Dr. Huberman practices what he preaches, starting his day with a glass of salt water. Advanced hydration strategies. Ever wondered if you're drinking enough water or too much? Dr. Huberman provides a nuanced approach to hydration, particularly around caffeine consumption. For every ounce of caffeinated beverage you drink, he recommends one and a half times as much water. But there's a twist, adding just a pinch of high-quality salt can significantly enhance water absorption and prevent the common pitfall of flushing essential minerals out of your body. Understanding your body's signals. Recognizing the signs of dehydration and electrolyte imbalance is key. Dr. Huberman explains that not all cravings for snacks or sugar are what they seem. Sometimes, they're your body's way of signaling a need for salt. There's a salt craving in order to bring that blood volume back up because by ingesting salt, you bring fluid into the bloodstream, you're increasing that blood pressure and you can restore the blood that's lost. I'll give yet another context that I think is fairly common nowadays. Many people are following a pattern of eating that more or less resembles intermittent fasting or at least time-restricted feeding. So they're eating between particular feeding windows. And then in the 
certain parts of the 24 hour cycle, not just sleep, but during certain parts of their waking cycle, they're also actively avoiding food. Um, banking on, I think, uh, either the possible, I wanna say possible, longevity promoting effects of intermittent fasting or, and or I should say, they are banking on the fact that for many people, not eating is easier than portion control for certain parts of the day. And so they find it beneficial to limit calories overall uh, to a given amount, depending on what their goals are, by not consuming food for certain periods of the day. But usually during those periods of the day, they're consuming fluids. And oftentimes those fluids include not just water, but caffeine. And caffeine is a diuretic. It actually causes the excretion of fluids from the body in part because it causes the excretion of sodium. All of that to say that if you're somebody who, for instance, eats your first meal around noon or one or 2 p.m. and you're fasting for the early part of the day and you're drinking coffee or tea or, and, or ingesting a lot of water, you are going to be excreting sodium along with that water. And so many people, including myself, find that it's useful, especially when I'm drinking caffeine during that so-called fasting or uh, you know non-food intake part of the of time-restricted feeding, that I'm making sure to get enough salt either in the form of something like Element, um, an electrolyte drink, or putting some sea salt into some water, or certainly anytime one is ingesting caffeine, replacing some of the lost water by increasing one's water intake. Long-term benefits of proper salt and water balance. Maintaining proper salt and water balance isn't just about feeling good today. Dr. Huberman discusses the long-term health benefits, including improved mental health, enhanced physical performance, and even potential longevity benefits. Not getting enough high-quality salt can lead to several health issues. Hyponatremia. Symptoms include headaches, confusion, seizures, and in severe cases, coma or death. Impaired nerve function. Insufficient salt can cause muscle cramps, weakness, and impaired nerve signals. Digestive issues. Salt helps produce digestive juices. Too little can cause indigestion, bloating, and constipation. Poor heart health. Low salt intake can lead to low blood pressure, causing dizziness and fainting. Decreased hydration. Salt maintains fluid balance. Without enough, the body can't retain water effectively. Cognitive impairments. Chronic low salt can affect concentration, memory, and cognitive functions. Balancing salt intake is crucial, and using mineral-rich, high-quality salts can provide essential nutrients. Choosing the right salt. What should you use? Ever wondered which salt is best for your health? Forget about ordinary table salt. It lacks the essential minerals your body needs. And while Himalayan pink salt is popular, it's not always our top recommendation due to inconsistencies in its origin and mineral content. Let's explore better options. Why Celtic sea salt and fleur de sel are superior choices. First up, Celtic sea salt, a bit pricier yes, but packed with numerous health benefits. Harvested using traditional methods, this salt retains a spectrum of minerals that help balance your body's electrolytes, crucial for nerve and muscle function. It's not just salt, it's a mineral supplement. Then there's fleur de sel, often referred to as the caviar of salts. Harvested in parts of France, this salt is known for its fine, delicate crystals and high mineral content. What sets it apart is the European certification on the packaging, guaranteeing its purity and origin. Practical tip for daily use. Dr. Andrew Huberman suggests that a little goes a long way, just half a teaspoon of these high-quality salts can be sufficient, especially if you're active and often sweat. This small amount replenishes the sodium lost and supports your overall hydration levels. If you're engaging in heavy exercise or find yourself sweating more than usual, adjusting your intake slightly can help maintain optimal health. Remember, while these premium salts offer more health benefits, they should still be used in moderation. Always consider your dietary needs and consult with a healthcare provider if you have health conditions that require monitoring sodium intake. Why Fleur de Cell is a game changer for dental health. In our quest for optimal health, let's not overlook dental care. Fleur de Cell isn't just for cooking, it can play a crucial role in dental health, particularly in remineralizing your teeth. This high-quality salt can help restore minerals to the tooth enamel, potentially reducing the risk of cavities and decay. Step-by-step -step tutorial, we have a detailed tutorial on how to make your own Fleur de Cell toothpaste. The tutorial will guide you through each step, ensuring you can create a safe, effective product right at home. We'll include a link to the video in the description below, so be sure to check it out and give it a try. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button and share it with your friends to spread the knowledge. Don't forget to subscribe to Very Very OK for more insightful content on enhancing your health naturally. Your support helps us bring more great videos your way. Thanks for watching. Very Very OK.